welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. And it's just me this time uh, because Lisa is on vacation. And I'm very happy to have with us the fabulous school resource officer, Phil Powers. Hi, Margie. Known affectionately as OP. OP for Officer Phil or Officer Powers. Yep. Yeah. So back the story goes back to quite a few years ago when um, my student made that name up for me. So and it's I was going to ask that. But I always tell the kids, you know, you can call me anything. Yeah. As long as it's something positive. So right. If they just want to call me Phil, you know. But Do you remember the Andy Griffin show? Oh, yeah. Griffith? Griffith. Griffith. Yeah. And Opie was the kid, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. 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 But they Great don't know series. that. No. Who was that student? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're not going to name any names. Yeah. No. You can say your name. It's allowed. Wasn't my name. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So we are here. Um, the reason I, well, first of all, you're a great person to talk to anyway, and this is a talk show. So guys, if you're watching, please call in. You can talk to Phil, you can ask questions, you can add to any of our other segments. Um, the first one is with Phil to talk about today's teenagers, and we have a couple of issues, um, but if you have any, just call in. And then the second uh, episode, the second segment is going to be talking about cell phone use, and is it a good thing, a bad thing, or mixed? And finally, we're going to talk about the 2018 Olympics, which have been very exciting, the highs and the lows and anything you want to talk about. So you can see the uh, phone number at the bottom of the screen, 508-435-7880, or um, live at hcam.tv would be our email. So Well, hopefully you're going to explain this curling. Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. I'll, just... I'll be glad to <laughs> learn how to actually play that game. It's so weird. Yeah. But I have to say that when I was in high school, and we won't mention what uh, year that was. Well, I probably have you beat, so. No. So my friends actually were part of a curling club in Wayland. So, it, it, and, you really? know, yeah, it was something they did. I don't know if it was Wayland Country Club or I forget what it was called, but there was, they were actually doing it. I know it goes back to Scotland. Anyway, that's the, the third thing. Third so, um, so the reason I thought of this was because I work at Elmwood School. And, and I got a phone call from Molly, who's at the high school, mm -hmm. and she said, Mom, do you know why we have to leave school? And I said, no, I have no idea. So then I looked at my email, and it said that there had been a round found in a boys' team room. And first of all, I didn't know what a round was. I didn't know if that's, you know, I'm picturing a round thing that goes on a blah, 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 machine gun yeah. with a thing coming, you know, all the little thing coming down. I didn't know what a round was. I didn't, you know, boys team room. I'm thinking, is that a locker room? Is that, what is that? And then of course, how did that happen? So okay. you were on the front lines of that. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, well, the round, the round is singular. So, but they call it ammunition and ammunition could be a lot or it could just be one. So yeah, so it was, was one it bullet. Was one bullet that was found uh, in the team room, boys team room. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when it came to me, I met with Mr. Bishop, and we discussed the plan, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So at that point, he called the superintendent, I called my chief, my lieutenant, we came up and we had a uh, meeting to decide what we were going to do. Yeah. Um, so what we did do is we did put the, the kids into a shelter in place, and the reason for that was just to, uh, so we could control the kids. Sure. There was no danger. Right. Right. And then we decided, well, we, it, it was fortunate enough that uh, that was the day that all the friends and family of the Patriots were heading to Minnesota oh. for, the, for the game. So they happened to have eight canines down at Gillette Stadium. So when we called for a canine, we had four immediately. Oh, my gosh. That Actually, was too fast. Amazing Yeah, so timing. now we're trying to, we're still coming up with a decision. And uh, we decided that we're going to um, send the kids home for the day. Right. Not to evacuate, but to um, just let them go home. Uh, that would give us a better chance and, and uh, search the building a little bit better without the kids being there. Yeah, secure so, the building yeah, and just figure yeah. out. So if the kids were never in more. any danger. Yeah. Um, you know, we just dismissed them just so we could do a better job right. searching the building. So, so um, do the canines smell? Ammunition? Could they smell? Yeah, I, th I guess it's like gunpowder. Okay, so, so they can smell they're, that. They're bomb sniffing dogs, and they're, okay. and they're yeah, trained for so gunpowder. So any incendiary yep. material. Yep. So they, so that was great, and thank you so yeah, much. And, for and being it worked right out well. A uh, few little glitches that we had were some parents, uh, some teachers are parents like yourself. Um, so they were getting information and then passing it on to the kids. So 
so, yeah, no, I didn't see Yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's a little issue, and uh, we, yeah, so uh, some people got information that they sent out, which was false information, but. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what happened to me. So I said, um, you know, Molly didn't know what it was, and she mm -hmm. was panicked. So I said, um, from what I'm reading, there was, you know, a round found in the boys' team room. And she said, oh, because I heard there were two knives and there was something else. And, mm -hmm. and you that's know, how rumors so, start. So I said that. I said, this is what I know for sure. We don't, anything else is a rumor. Don't worry about it, you know, and it seems like everything's under control. So a lot of the kids were uh, very calm through this whole thing that, you know, we had four canines, you know, not doing any search yet, but they were out front of the school, walking around the school. And every year I conduct a canine search for right. marijuana. Right. So most of the kids thought that's what was happening. Right. So they remained calm because they enjoy, you know, the dogs coming in. Sure. You know, they, they love that school and they love to take ownership of that school. Yeah. So uh, when I do that, and Mr. Bishop, you know, they really enjoy that. They love to see the puppies. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's what they thought was happening. So the kids were calm. Yep. Um, the advisory was going on at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, once the advisory was over, we put them into shelter in place. And um, it was funny because when we did that, you know, anybody that might have had some kind of paraphernalia was flushed down the toilet and um, what you we mean had, they, we had they one went toilet to the yeah right we, we had a toilet that was clogged and they had oh a couple of these jewels and I'll explain these so later. they were afraid that their their yeah so questionable I, substances would yeah. be sniffed out but what I also do too is you know I, I feel I have a good relationship with you the do. kids so while we're making plans you know, the chiefs are all together, the fire chief, the uh, superintendent, the, the police chief, they're all coming up with, you know, and, and sending letters home to the parents. Right, I got that. And notifying the other schools. Uh, so I like to go out into the hallway. So if the kids see me calm, it's just right. like being on a plane. You yeah, know, if thank you. See, you. you know, thank you. So, you know, they see me being calm over there, then yeah. they, were, they were calm. You're so. the best. Well, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. Just, uh, and you're you humble, know. which is part of being the best. No, but, so um, I, I, I had a, a parent who has a child at Hopkins get concerned because uh -huh. she said, who knows what's happening? The kids are still at Hopkins, but they cleared the high school. And that's, you guys cleared that out of an abundance of caution just to make sure the high school was safe. But the middle school. Well, the middle school was put into shelter in place also. Yeah. And it wasn't because they were at, at any risk. Right. They put shelter in place because we're going to be dismissing the entire high school. Yep. And we don't want any chaos going, you know, why are sure. they going home? Yeah. So they were shelter in place so, you know, they yep. could remain. Uh, and then know, they resume classes. Class. Yeah. yeah they, right. Shelter in place is, you know, they're in class. They right. can continue, you know, their work, but yeah. they just can't leave the classroom. Yeah. You know, they have to stay put and uh, unless there's an emergency or that somebody has to go to the bathroom, but we'd never let someone go by themselves. So you would always right. have to go with somebody. So. Right, right. Um, so we were talking before the show about um, the teacher in, where was it? Uh, the principal in Medford, was it? Yeah, I, so I don't have found, a lot of information. Yeah, all I'm just, I, from what I heard, um, there had been something found bullets or a gun or something and he did not share with the parents he did not shut the school down but now that the parents are finding out about this they're saying hey how come we didn't right. you know yeah. how come something wasn't happening well that was a decision they chose to right. go uh, right. you know right or wrong uh, we chose to go beyond right you know to, we want to make sure that everybody was safe and, yes. and, and we train for this we do drills at each right. school Alice drills. yeah yep. and uh, you know evacuations right. uh, we do weather drills so we were very well prepared for this right. and right. it worked out well yeah, really, yeah. Uh, I was proud of everybody it was amazing yeah, yeah and the especially other especially the kids you know yes. the way they responded. And, that, and again that's because they're so you reassure them by being calm they've seen the dogs you guys have done such a great job of the practice that they, you know, that they're fine, whatever happens. Um, the other thing I saw on the news was a school, and I want to say it's in Illinois, that has that on their fob they have an alarm or something, mm -hmm. or they ha and then on the wall there's something that says the classroom is safe or the classroom has an intruder in it, that they can go over to the wall and, and shift that. They have cameras along the ceiling and they can track the movement of the intruder, and then they can say, okay, we have the intruder over by the door well, a doorway, and then they have they can activate a smoke screen. So psh, the smoke comes out around the intruder who's coughing and moves, but they can kind of keep letting the smoke go out so they can control where the intruder goes, and that seemed to me way over the top 
Um, and unfortunately, it seems like the more school shootings we have, the more this kind of system might need to be in place. I think they yeah. said $40,000 or something. That's all? Wow. I Sounds know, it really good. was, it sounded like Some schools want, down south, uh, they want to bomb the teachers. You know, it's like, That's crazy. Yeah. No, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I did riflery in sixth grade at camp. And that was, you know, for me, and I shoot archery, so it's, for me it's kind of fun to see the targets. Can I get the target? That's, yeah. I would never... My, um, I always was taught that whatever you have can be used against you. Sure. So yep, I would never want to have anything yep. that could be used against me. You know, maybe so, that noisy. So we have tasers thing. now at the, at the police department, which is great because it gives us one more tool on our tool belt. So, yeah. which is very helpful to us because if we don't have a taser, all mm -hmm. we have left is our sidearm. Right. So, so this is great. You know. Yeah. So yeah. All right. So that. So oh, okay. We've got um, oh Southwestern High School in Indiana. That's where it was, not okay. Illinois. The classroom doors are bullet resistant. I forgot to say that. Cameras are everywhere, and the sheriff's department, 10, minute, 10 miles away, can track the intruder in real time. Really? So that's that's where. But it 10 was. miles away is kind of makes me nervous. That it well, takes and I I thought at first it said 10 minutes. I don't have my glasses yeah. on, but it says 10 miles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's quite a distance. Right, and, uh, it must be you know, a big for place. us. We're less than a mile away. You know? Right. Plus we have me in the school. You know, so you do have police there already. So. Yeah, so really, I mean, we. I mean, I'm so grateful to you for making that school a well, safe place. Well, it, it's a team, you know. We have a district uh, task force yeah. where the superintendent runs, and it's you know police, fire, uh, the school, and the mm -hmm. district attorney, so the courts, you know. And yeah, it works well. We really you know? appreciate so that. It's, uh, I yeah. I think that Hopkinton is so well advanced compared to some other schools. Yeah, you know, some schools still don't lock their front doors. Right, well, and our, we, our schools, you have to go through one door, get buzzed absolutely. in one door, and get buzzed in a second door. Right. In all schools. Right. So. And and that that um, has was that two, three years ago, four years ago, Elmwood School got that. Yes. Yeah. And then we were told all the classroom doors should be locked as yeah. well. I think doors should be locked all the time because we have a lot of new town. adjoining yeah. rooms. So yeah, exactly. if a teacher in one room leaves their door, right. then you can get into two classrooms. So. Right. Yeah. So the message from the uh, from Kathy McLeod that came out that was February second. Um, said the 30, uh, she, she followed up and she explained it, which yeah. I, we really appreciate. And the appreciate. kids got the information too exactly. after. Exactly, right. So it was a, a 30 30 rifle am ammunition. Right. So it's a hunting It's a hunting rifle. piece of equipment. Yeah. So so some kid, you know, somehow this is or so an cool. Adult. Or an adult yeah, might have had it. We have it. coaches that go in those Fill team rooms. Uh, right, so what is a team room then? It's in the locker room, it's a, it's a room when off of the boys lock yeah okay. it's off of the boys locker room so you can go from the locker room to the team room yeah um, and there are lockers in it uh, you, kids do get changed in there but that's an area where it's kind of open so you can meet with your team and, and discuss yeah. strategies yeah so that's so. when we when they show us what the coach is talking to the team that's usually where it is as opposed to where the showers are in the yeah it's separate yeah, it's, yeah. yeah the, the only thing that's in there is a few benches and lockers yeah okay so, yeah. thank you so and, much and people change yeah so it kind of makes sense that maybe it fell out of somebody's backpack yeah, it's, it yeah it, and and see for me i was much more reassured when i found it it was one rifle bullet right. that's totally different mm -hmm. from you know, collection. A magazine of, full of them. Which I, because I didn't know Correct. what I didn't know what a round was. And we also have three ride and gun clubs in Hockington. Exactly. And it, hunting season had just finished. Right. I'm not saying that's what it was. That's you know, a possibility. Right. Of course. Yep. Of course. And and given that there was nothing else. Yeah. And it's still you know under investigation. Yeah. Okay. So, well, so. thank you for doing that. Well. All right. And the other thing, um, I actually went to. I love to go hear live music. So I heard a band that was a Bob Marley cover band at a place called um, Electric Haze in Worcester. And this is the first time I've ever been there. There were these things on the table called hookahs mm -hmm. that have little snaky pipes just like in um, Alice in Wonderland with right. the caterpillar, hookah smoking caterpillar. And there was a smell like kind of a um, perfumey. Sense, yeah. So then, so I was thinking hookahs are kind of weird, and I looked up um, hookahs, and it's actually, uh, some of it is tobacco, but the thing that I found kind of scary was that they, to, to make it work, they have to burn a charcoal at the top, I guess, and then that's what heats it, but the charcoal is putting out carbon monoxide, and you're breathing in whatever the poison 
things are from the charcoal. Anything that other than oxygen you're putting into your lungs exactly. has to be bad. Right. And I, I am not ever, I smoked once, picked up a cigarette by the side of the road in camp. It was disgusting. I've never smoked since. But so, these hookah pipes, uh, yeah. they're legal. They are. And, and it, you know, you don't use it for marijuana. Right. Or, you know, it's so. just that smelly, whatever it is. So it started in Persia and India. Um, toxic agents that can cause clogged arteries and heart disease. Um, hookah use by youth and college students is increasing. High school seniors, um, one in five boys and one in six girls have used a hookah. High prevalence of hookah among college students. Um, battery powered can contain, it can be nicotine flavors, other chemicals. I was a little bit horrified. Um, and uh, same risks as cigarette smoking, like you were saying. So back a few years ago, <laughs> they were pretty popular. I don't see them now. like I did ye a few years back. Oh, good. Yeah, so. good. So it started. So it started here, but then it's not so much. But it always gets replaced by something else. Exactly. So, so the vaping is what seems to be the popular thing now. Is that vaping right? Vaping uh, and jewels. Jewels. And, and I do have a couple jewels that uh, we confiscated yeah. up at the high school. Okay. And uh, I just want to. Because people, I, I never knew what these looked like until we confiscated them. But can we hold that up? Yeah, so this is a jewel. All right. This is the the uh, pod that goes in the jewel. So this is where all the liquid is. And this is uh, there's nicotine in here. Yeah. You oh. put it in there, uh -huh. and and you just uh, suck into it. So it? vaping is a nicotine delivery system. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh. You can do some vapes. The jewels, I think that's all you can get is. Uh, and does nicotine, it taste like? Um, does it taste? It gives like off a fruity smoke? flavor. So it's nicotine. I've never but tried it. Tastes it, so. like fruit. Well, or perfume. I've been in rooms after kids have been caught using these, and it, you know the men's room at the high school they don't smell all that nice. Yeah. But with these, the, um, <laughs> it's like a fruity flavor. So, so one it good is fruity thing about smell. So you can thing. yeah, it's like an air fresher. We but do have we do have one email that says are there hookah places around here. Uh, I think like in the joke and smoke shops, yeah, uh, 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 yeah a smoke like shop. Spencer Gifts? I don't think Spencer still? Gifts, no, but it, I um, think, wait. yeah, we don't have them in Hopkinton. What's that, um, I the think music's like place down in, mm, next to Old Navy, Daddy's, I don't know, anyway, but, yeah. Okay, these joke so there and smoke are, shops. there are, you, you can places. get them, yeah, and We're you can get them online, sure too. We're just not sure because we don't go there. Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> these jewels, though, you can buy these just at any place they sell cigarettes. From what I understand, they cost about seventy dollars or more. Yeah. And um, can I hold that? It looks yeah, sort of lightweight. One. So it's yeah. Okay. So, so it's really it's battery operated, mm -hmm. and you have a charging system. So this comes with it. It just Which you plug just, it into. Yep. Looks USB. like a charger for yep. your phone. Yep. And you just put that there, and it's charging. So, being a parent myself, if I came home and just saw that, I would think it's you know like a something thumb drive or something, something for the computer. Right. 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 No, it's you know. Kids are charging these uh, jewels right on the, the parents' noses. And know? do they do it? Do they charge them at school in class? Yeah, yeah. Well, really? yeah, because this, these came from the high school. Yeah. This is a little bit different. This is uh, you put oil in these, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a button you press, mm -hmm. and you just suck into it, and you can have uh, marijuana. Oil and it looks like here. a pen. Yeah. yeah. So and they this could is put the in... oil. Yeah. You get all different flavors. Huh. This one here is called painkiller. So, what does that mean? Yeah, I'm not does sure. Does it say what's in there? Do you need my reading glasses? I think I need more than that. You try. They're, they're not girly. Yeah, you see if they. But I don't I, th I I think this reading. is. I don't think that has anything in it. But you can get it with nicotine. You can get it plain that just have a flavor. Mm -hmm. the, warning: This it, product contains USP uh, USP something something. I can't read what it says. Uh, bad things. Yeah. And again, this is uh, a battery in here, so you have, you know, it, the battery, you plug it on here and you charge it, again, through your computer system. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, this says right here, not for minors, yeah. pregnant or nursing mothers. Well, again, uh, anything you put in your mouth that's, you know. Yikes. Yeah, I mean, these, these are what we've confiscated these. Mm -hmm. um, At the school. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the difference between the black one and the silver one? Is that the same? The color. Just different. Yep. Okay. Oh, and these are the uh, pods that you buy, four pods. So one of these pods, and I, you know, I get, 
I get educated by the kids. The kids yeah. tell me this. So yeah. The, so the information I'm giving is coming from the kids. So, yeah. So it's real. So one of these pods is equal to a pack of cigarettes. <gasps> all right. And you can get like a hundred hits off of uh, the one pod. So that's an awful lot of nicotine going into your system. And the kid could conceivably sit there yeah, and just you, do a hundred. You just sit here like this and you a hundred suck times, it in. And then they've just smoked a pack it into of cigarettes. their sleeve because it's not really giving off any smoke that you're going to see. Because it's a water vapor uh, thing? I'm not What's, sure. No, it's not water, water because, vapor? yeah, because what it, is, it's, it's battery operated. So vaping, so, so the, what? The oil in there. So it's oil vapor. Yeah, so it must heat it up or something because it's off that the, the vapor, so. Nice. But yeah, uh, you can buy so, these, you know, at any place you buy cigarettes. So can I, so this is a, so these are the these pods. These are the pods. And this has, is there, I know this is a green color, that's an orange color, is that just the different flavor yeah, I, I don't know it, it could be this is yeah it's these are cool mint okay so i don't know what this would be and it's five percent five percent strength whatever that five percent nicotine perhaps yeah, probably yeah but they're not good for you no but so you know if you see something like this in your, uh, okay. you know, the, the computer you. at home yeah that's and so the is, thing so. the the sneaky thing is it doesn't taste like cigarette you're not you're not breathing in smoke like a cigarette so a kid or anybody who's just starting or just thinks oh yeah this is cool and may get the nicotine high yeah doesn't no. know that they're getting addicted because it doesn't sure. look like it's a nicotine. cigarette and nicotine and you know, it's nicotine addictive. wow so what's the tall thing this is another one that's a little bit uh more expensive this one was called because you could fit more oil in it and it's battery operated too and it's got all it, check auto mister and you know it's got a checklist on it. it tells you how much battery is left in it uh, so it's got settings to go higher and lower you just put your mouth I've and seen, you suck on it i've seen adults use yeah. those yeah so is so what's the law is it 21 to before they hopkinton's 18 to purchase for this for cigarette products so oh, you can't buy right. you know i, I mean know. the oil base I, you know i think you have to get that online i don't mm -hmm. you know the ones with the uh, the marijuana in it so that's kind of that's a scary thing. It is very scary because they, they don't they don't realize what they're doing and it's um, it's we're affecting their health. We're even seeing this in the middle school. Okay, so I mean they're starting young. Um, a lot of freshman girls, uh, from what I understand, are trying it. Uh, hopefully, they're trying it and not liking it. And but I, it doesn't. You know, it doesn't sound like girls, something you wouldn't like because it's all you're tasting is a perfumey, yeah, well, cool. flowery, and it's. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've never tasted. I don't know. Well, that's what I'm. But you that's know, what it smells like. Yeah, right? it smells so like it. But I don't taste you know. Like they smell. You're, you're getting nicotine in you, so. And they don't know it. Yeah. Well, yeah. they must know it, but it's you know it's a cool thing to do, I guess, to try it. And I feel that this is a pretty uh, big problem with the high school and the middle school, you know. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, so anything else that's a big problem that you wanna? talk about that parents a parking have. parking <laughs> but you know yeah. It's, yeah it's not enough parking i ran out of parking spaces and you know the kids that get the parking tickets um a lot of them don't pay them and two years down the road when you know the diploma no no oh. when they uh go to re-register your car oh. they can't because they have outstanding parking tickets oh. so but yeah but wow yeah, that is a problem. And so is that going to be any better with the elementary school going? I mean, the center marathon school, will there be extra parking there no. for? No, it's no. not going to. They're talking about uh, the field and back of the cafeteria at the high school, paving that, making that a parking lot so for additional. And, and the oh. buses would park there, too. Yeah, that's a field hockey field. Yeah, yeah that might yeah. just be a parking lot. That makes year. sense, actually. It, it does. And, yeah. and, you know, the school buses, they go off to Ashland every night. If right. they stayed in Hopkinton, Hopkinton would receive the excise tax. Oh. And plus they'd save on fuel. So they're trying to find a place for the buses to park in a safe area. And they could park there if they yeah. paid the that area. could be the drop-off and pick That's up. brilliant. Yeah. And, and use brilliant. the bus loop as the parent drop-off. I love it. I'm going to write that down. Okay. Um, so a so parent should look for that little thing. Yeah, if they see that. Thing, those pen things. And then what would they do? Just confront the well, child? Do they yeah, just tell well, them? Yeah, take them away. I mean, they can't be good for them. If they, you know, I yeah. guess they can give them permission to use them, but uh, they're not legal in school. So. Uh, oh, and they actually changed the consequence for being caught with a jewel. First offense is out of school two days. 
That's you can't have an in school. It's automatic. Two days out of school. Second yeah. offense, up to five days out of school. Wow. Because that's how much of a problem we finding that these uh, jewels are. So it makes me want to breathe every time I look at that thing. So, so kids, you said dump them. Did they dump the jewels in the toilet? Yeah. Or they, oh yeah. There was one that, toilet got clogged. And they're metal. Yeah. That's a metal thing that they, because they. Mm -hmm. So the trash wasn't secure enough for them. They felt they had to flush it. Right. Wow. But well. So. Yikes. So the field hockey field, um, would there be a field hockey field put in somewhere else? Because we have a question that says, is that field hockey field the future addition? Uh, no, I just think that we have. Parking. Uh, it would be for parking, but yeah. um, I think we have enough fields down there. <laughs> you do? Because yeah. I'm thinking field 10, 11, y yeah. right? So they've got to yep. be 11. All right, great. All right, well, that's actually, I know you had so much fun that it went really fast. Well, real fast. And um, we're done with our first segment for today. So if you want to continue, we're going to talk about um, cell phone use. And um, so you decide, we're going to decide on the break if maybe we get OP some more. So join us in a couple minutes. Thank you. This week on HCAM. Set of school reuse advisory team held their first public forum at the senior center. Community center. A community center. This would involve not only the young people, but the older people, the middle people, and that would involve and be a lot of pride in the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, B. Again. Thank you. Yeah. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. This week on Hopkin and Coffee Break, Patricia, Connie, and Dolly sit down with author Meredith O'Brien. Uh, well, uh, Nancy Cleary, who is the publisher, she did a, uh, a feature story with one of the publications I wrote for, and I happened to see her profiled, and, and I called her, and I said, well, you were just profiled in the same, same uh, publication where I run my columns. You want to be interested in a, in a book of columns, and that's how it just started. And we're back. Thanks for joining us. Um, we really appreciated Officer Phil Powers joining us to talk about some teen issues and continuing on teen issues. We're going to talk a little bit about cell phone use. Um, there's a lot of concern um, among parents, scientists, about what cell phones are actually doing to our brains. Um, obviously, there have been increases in traffic fatalities and difficulties because people, even though they know they're not supposed to text, when the signal goes off on the phone, it's kind of like, you know, oh my gosh, I need to answer that or see what's happening. So it's kind of a tricky thing. Um, I found an article in the Washington Post that said, this was in, in January, um, they're talking about the addictive designs of smartphones and social media. Um, it makes it for hard for anybody to put down, especially teenagers. But now there's a large drop in adolescent happiness um, connected to the prolif proliferation of smartphones. And they find that the more hours a day a teenager spends in front of screens, the less satisfied they are. Um, we have heard that you know um, people on Facebook uh, get a little depressed because everyone's putting up their trip to Aruba or showing happy pictures of themselves celebrating with their children. Um, so there is an element of, look how great my life is, that someone else who's watching them may not feel as good about their life, or they may be depressed, or they may be something happening. Gets, you know, you know it's, not, uh, it's not the same as reading a book. When you read a book, you get transported to another reality, another story, not your own story, and you know it's not real. So even though you're reading something um, that's either fantasy or it could be realistic fiction, it's not real. It's not like your best friend going to 
you know, Cancun or something. So anyway, um, it happens for adults as well. Um, but this report decreases in psychological well-being among American adolescents after 2012, which is when smartphones started to really get um, into public use, and links to screen time during the rise of smartphone technology was published Monday, I guess that was around the 22nd of January, um, in the journal Emotion. So they study 8th, 10th, and 12th graders, um, and I guess they've been, they've been checking them a survey annually, um, and it rose, this um, self-esteem rose since the early 1990s, life satisfaction and happiness then plunged after 2012, which is the year smartphone ownership reached the 50% mark. I think that's pretty significant. Um, so until 2012, from the 1990s, early 1990s up to 2012, 2012, people were feeling pretty good about themselves, kids, adolescents, and then as soon as smartphone use hit, um, kids got depressed and comparing each other, comparing themselves to each other. I know the selfies, there's a lot of taking of, of your, you know, people take their own picture and then they send that as a Snapchat um, just to show their expression as opposed to talking face to face. Um, so the more times, the more hours a week they spend on screen, including internet, social media, texting, gaming, video chats, um, and these findings jive with earlier studies indicating link, linking frequent screen use and teenage depression and anxiety. I don't think this is any news um, to most people. Um, oh, Pat Mahone, uh, Pat said, uh, Phil is one of the best but underappreciated people in town. He is a true Hopkinton treasure. Thanks, Pat. Yep, he's gone. I meant to have him say something to you, but anyway, next time. Um, so, so the smartphones, um, people, I guess the percentage of smartphones jumped from 37% in 2012 to 73% in 2015 to 89% at the end of 2016. I think almost every kid has a smartphone now. Um, and speaking for myself, they're expensive, you buy them and then the screen breaks and it, it just seems like there's something wrong with that picture. But anyway, um, so the study correlates happiness and screen activities and non-screen activities like sports, in-person interaction, religious services, print media, homework. For all non-screen activities, the correlation between happiness and their activity was positive, but the screen activities, it was uniformly negative. So they don't feel good about themselves when they interact with media, social media. <sighs> so one of the professors at San Diego State University who did the study, the study's lead author, took away the Kindle fires and put them in a drawer because she was so upset. Um, but so what do we do about that? Um, there's got to be some kind of way to um, incorporate other things, you know, encourage to do, uh, we do have a lot of sports here in Hopkinton, thank goodness. Um, but this is saying that it's really becomes like an addiction. And with any addiction, breaking that addiction is difficult. If you try to monitor a kid and say, okay, you can only use it for this amount of time, and they hear that phone go off, they get angry and, and physically want that phone back because it's an addiction. They need that phone in their mind. Um, but there were some other findings that weren't that bad. Teenagers who get a small amount of exposure to screen time one to five hours a week are happier than those who get none at all. The least happy were the ones who use screens for 20 or more hours a week. Now think about it, 20 hours a week is four hours a day for five days or three hours a day for seven days. So I, I think the kids get on the phone when they get home from school, which is two o'clock. They're on it till 10 o'clock at night or later that's eight hours a day. Um, and then sometimes they're on during school as well. Um, so the greater unhappiness among those with no screen exposure was due to several factors. They felt left out of social scene. And I know them, that if kids are on the cell phones and some people aren't, or they, everyone's looking at one Snapchat or something, it is, it is good to have kids aware and able to participate in what social activity other teens are doing. But if it's bad for them, that's the difficult thing. So what they suggest is moderation. Um, rather than making one set of rules about when and how much screen time teens should have, case by case, um, just look at your own kid, look at their particular life, 
and um, some of it's just looking at your child and figuring out something's not right here. This kid is not happy. They are spending too much time on the screen. They need to get some physical exercise. Um, but I know when um, before cell phones, people used to get on the actual hand telephone, you know, the home phone. So people do want to be on a phone. Um, I think it's just the screen and having the picture showing, you know, what really cool thing that you were doing that that um, that maybe your friend isn't doing, and then they feel left out. Or sometimes there's cyberbullying that can go on. Um, Unfortunately, the cell phone use can also include sexting, which is where someone takes a picture of someone with no clothes on, or they take their own picture, and then they send that to someone else. So there are all kinds of things which are um, not healthy and, and can lead to depression, anxiety among teenagers. Um, moving on to cell phone use in cars, um, I know there's been a huge increase in, in traffic accidents, fatalities, because people are looking at the cell phones. If you're driving behind someone who's on a cell phone, the car is going like this, um, or it suddenly jerks. I personally was hit, um, and I could see him. I had put my signal on to take a left into Western Nurseries. I could see in my rearview mirror that the person behind me had his head down and was looking at the phone, and then boom, hit the back of my car because he didn't see my signal. He had been looking at his cell phone, assuming I was gonna continue straight. So how do you do that? Do we need to have something in our cars that we can signal the other driver? You know, you need to back off, you're gonna hit my car because you're not looking at, at the, at the, at the uh, street. The other accident I saw was next to me um, at the lights to take a left onto Fountain Street by um, Wendy's. There was a driver, we were both at a light, driver behind, banged right into the car next to me because she was looking down at her cell phone and didn't realize that the light had turned red. And then we have the terrible case of um, Shane DeRoche. Um, and I don't know if they proved this to be the case, but um, what I had heard was that there was a newly licensed driver in an SUV who was um, looking down at the cell phone when Shane tried to cross. So all kinds of things, um, hazards with cell phones. Um, uh, maybe with the onset of artificial intelligence and driverless cars, um, this will improve because then the car is going to be the one that's aware of what's happening with the road and where's the other car. I know Toyota's been having some commercials about um, accident avoidance vehicles. So if there's something in the road, they show that the car goes around it. Um, there's another ad where dad gets distracted and the car breaks because it sees that the car in front of it stopped. So it's a shame that we have to rely on the machines to do the um, awareness piece that we should be doing. But I think given that um, cell phones are here and um, don't seem to be going away, it's something that we really need to figure out how to address. Um, so if you have any thoughts, if you're watching and you have any thoughts of uh, some of the good things about cell phones, difficult things about cell phones, how we could maybe um, manage some of these issues, please give us a call. It's 508-435-7880 or email us live at hcam.tv or even if you want to um, send in a note about Officer Phil, um, I'm sure he'd be glad to hear because he said he was going to go home and watch. Um, so anyway, so cell phones um, are, seem to be here to stay. I know the things that the kids are doing are Instagram, Snapchat. Um, there has been, there was something called Vine. I'm sure there are other things. And I think where it really gets to be a problem is when it's taking the kids' attention away from an activity that's a healthier activity, either physically, um, such as sports, which I think a lot of kids participate in, in here in Washington, but not in all places. Or where if it's something, um, I know there was a, uh, kid who tried to board a plane, two girls tried to board a plane, and um, they were going to visit somebody named Dre, but they had a ticket that looked like it was too expensive, they looked kind of nervous, and it turned out that this guy had told them that they were gonna be able to come and do some modeling for him, and that was not true. So thank God someone stopped them, and then tracked down Dre, and then arrested him for human trafficking. Uh, so, cell phones can be dangerous, um, the suggestion by the experts is 
to look and see how your child is doing with this. If they seem more depressed and they're on that phone all the time in their room and that's all they're doing, uh, some balance probably should be brought to bear there according to the experts. Um, and how, how you handle that with your child is, is really up to you and your, the way you guys live your life. You know, all of us know as parents, when we look at our kids, we say, something's not right right here. So go on your best judgment and um, just realize that cell phones are a good thing in many ways, but they're also a hazard. So um, that's it for this segment. And we'll be back in a couple minutes to talk about the Olympics. Please call in, let us know your favorite or your the things that made you go woo um, in a couple minutes when we get back. Thank you. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, a family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness, and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. This week on um, Wake Up and Smell the Poetry, poets, storytellers, and musicians perform and share their original works. If you flip the back seat forward, you can handle your seat twice so much to begin. And not till breeze is red. Now the squirrels in the leafless tree. And we're back. Welcome back. Um, now this segment is going to be talking about the Olympics. I hope that some of you call in and, and talk with us a little bit about what you loved. I know I watched the opening ceremonies. I was so impressed. Um, I was reminded of the Olympics in China with all of the, the fireworks and the drumming. But I was really impressed by the beauty of the dancing I did not know that the white tiger was the symbol for South Korea. So I learned a lot culturally, and I just, I was just blown away by how beautiful everything was and how well choreographed. Um, it was gorgeous. The other thing that really impressed me um, and I was so grateful for was that South Korea and North Korea seemed to be moving towards um, a possible peace. Uh, the sister of the uh, leader of North Korea was there and uh, she sort of sat in the background but you you know you could tell that she was very much a part of it um, her name I think it was Kim Jong-un and um, it was just wonderful oh no sorry His, her name is yeah Kim Jong-un um, so she was uh, very pleasant and and watching um, and hopefully that this will help with the North Korea and South Korean uh, issue North Korea did invite South Korea's leader to uh, speak with him. So uh, it looks like there's going to be some kind of summit uh, for the Koreans. Um, an interesting thing they said was that Koreans made the first map of the stars of the, of the um, galaxy um, overhead, which I hadn't realized. So they showed some of the cultural history of Korea in their opening ceremonies. Um, they talked about the Asian value of the group being greater than the individual, which I just loved. So when you watch them, the whole group is moving. It isn't about the individual and how fabulous they are. It's more about the team or the whole, um, the whole uh, choreography of the piece. Um, the family name comes first. Uh, then they had some drums that they called the yin yang drums, which were really cool. And they were two-sided, um, sort of double-sided circles. And um, everything is linked in balance in their tradition, uh, like the north and the south side of the mountain. Um, 
and they moved around into a Korean symbol. So just beautiful choreography. They had the Rainbow Children's Choir um, of the Republic of Korea uh, in beautiful colors. Um, then we also found interesting was that there were many athletes that were born in other countries representing uh, a country. So our, the Nigerian bobsled team, for example, were um, born here, I believe, or they're born to Nigerian parents living here. So, but they're not representing the United States, they're representing Nigeria, and they actually did really well. I loved watching them. Um, and I, I probably should know what that medal was, but I don't have that right here. Um, then uh, North Korea and South Korea marched together as the Republic of Korea. Um, and the Ecuador, uh, the cross-country skier from Ecuador had to train on roller skis because there's no snow there. Uh, Russia was barred from participating, as we know, because they, um, there was some, uh, there was a doping scandal. Some uh, athletes were found to have um, illegal drugs in their system. Um, we have an estimated 90 countries with a total of 2,800 athletes played in this year's Olympics. I have some statistics here from the, from the experts in the corner. Um, and then this is so South Korea's first time hosting the Winter Olympics in 1988. Seoul hosted the Summer Games. So that's interesting. Thank you. Um, all right, Russia was barred from participating because of a doping scandal. The athletes applied to be considered clean. Then they were they're um, called the um, Olympic athletes from Russia. They're not. It's not representing Russia, and they can't fly the Russian flag. Um, and the anthem will be the Olympic anthem, not the Russian anthem. And then just the other night, um, one of the athletes that did qualify, I believe it's a curling athlete from Russia, was found to have drugs in his system. And um, I did hear something say that, oh, it's a conspiracy and it isn't real, but how likely is that? So unfortunately, the Russians still are using drugs. Um, Shinzo Abe was at this opening ceremony, the Prime Minister of Japan, the women's bobsled team, uh, are actually from New Jersey, but they're representing Jamaica because they have Jamaican heritage. Um, China, I guess, has 1.4 billion people. In their country, they sent 81 athletes. Chinese Taipei is the same as Taiwan, which is um, an island off of China that's independent now. Um, and yeah, so there were fireworks and searchlights, images of Korea, um, and then, then a, an older man sang a song um, called Ari, Ari Rang about sadness and sorrow. Even in moments of greatest sadness, one can find a glimpse of hope, joy, and light. And I think, um, I think it's been said that this Olympics is an attempt, or it's called the Olympics of Peace is what the Koreans are calling this. So I'm hoping, very hopeful that something good will come out of this in terms of the Korean issue, which has been very difficult. Um, then the Olympic chair said that he is very touched by this wonderful message of peace in his speech. Uh, the Republic of Korea is Moon Jae-in in South Korea, and the Democratic People of Korea is Kim Jong-il, North Korea. Um, then they have candles that are a powerful symbol, um, 216 candles held by 2 million um, people coming out in protest. Uh, then Imagine was sung by South Korean singers. They set the doves free. And the doves are, again, an image of peace um, and the theme of groupness, which I thought was really cool. All right, so now to talk about some of the medals, um, some of the medal winners. Tonight, we had even more. Um, Jesse Diggins and K Kick and Randall um, got gold for cross country. The, and um, beat Sweden by 0.19 seconds. Norway got the bronze. Lindsey Vaughn got a bronze, bronze downhill. And you, as you know, she's 33, and this is her last Olympics. And she's been very, very um, consistent. Although I did see that uh, she had several injuries. And I just think, wow, uh, just a very brave person to continue to go as hard as she does, even though she gets banged up. Um, so she got, thank God, uh, bronze for all of her efforts. Um, Britia Sigourney, half pipe bronze. Maya and Alex Shibutani, the Shib Sibs, um, got a bronze for their ice dancing. They, they are so incredible too. It's wonderful see, to see the, um, the uh, siblings participating. 
So at this point, on uh, the Olympics, I believe, started on the 9th, and they continued to the 25th. Um, on February 13th, Norway had 11 um, total medals. Now they have 33. They're still in first place. And um, 13 gold, 11 silver, 9 bronze. Um, next is Germany with uh, 12 gold, 7 silver, 5 bronze. Um, we had Samantha let us know that her best moments were the USA women winning gold in cross country and the Jamaica and Nigeria women's bobsled. Yeah, that was, that was those bobsled. Oh my gosh, watching the, the bobsleds just, they look like they're riding in a bullet. And they run, 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 and then one jumps in and the other one jumps in and then they, I don't know how they do that, honestly, and sometimes they bang. Um, and then was it the German men's team that somehow put on a little extra burst at the end and went up on the side and ended up coming in with the, the sled actually sliding in on its side. It was quite a dramatic ending there. Um, so anyway, United States is in fifth place, and uh, we have 16 total medals, six gold, four silver, six bronze. Um, but again, I think, you know, in terms of the groupness, I think just the very exciting thing, one of the very exciting things about Olympics is watching the whole world get together and compete as um, fellow athletes. And they are not, you know, I did, I did see the women's hockey team, um, uh, the Americans played the can Canadians, and they talked about going on there and wanted to really get physical and beat up. And they were, they were actually going right at it, and uh, I was kind of amazed. But they said it's just when they're on the ice. What I did observe when they came off the ice is that everybody's hugging everybody. So they're, they're so full of uh, joy and, and accomplishment. Um, the, co the cross country Norwegians that just raced today, the first guy, I guess, is 12 years older. He's 33. And so he ran, the, he did the first lap of this, or the first half of the cross country race. And he was huffing and puffing, but he put on the extra burst of speed in the beginning, which surprised the commentator, because usually he puts it on toward the end. But I think he had some pressure coming in on him from the other teams, the other racers. And then he connected to the guy uh, who was 21 who took it in for the win. Um, and they just were, it's just so wonderful to see their, their joy. It's kind of a vicarious thing. We, I'm not going to be a cross-country racer in the Olympics. I'm not going to get in a bobsled, although it does look really fun. Um, and then we think about skeleton when they're lying on their face. You know, they're lying on their bellies and they're, they're headed down at 80 miles an hour and turning and turning and turning. And, you know, it just amazes me um, that they come out whole in one piece. And then, um, you know, then the skeleton and then the luge when they're lying on their back and they're, they're somehow looking through their toes to see how, where they're going. And they just a slight maneuvering of the shoulder or the foot dragging a little bit um, sears them. So it's just amazing to me, and the, and the fact that kids get this this push to, to go for this. Um, they showed the the American um, ice dancer, just beautiful um, ice dancer, and showed her as a little kid at the um, arena where she trained, and all of the people from that arena were watching her. Uh, I want to say Iowa. I'm not. I forget. Um, Terrell, I think her last name was, but she was just amazing, and, and she had a goal. She could imagine herself at the, at the Olympics. So again, you know, just to encourage the kids, if they have something that they love to do, encouraging them um, to aim high, because they could get to the Olympics, who knows? Um, so then uh, they actually had some things at school, um, at Elmwood School they talked about um, for the kids. Um, the torch for the Pyeongchang, Pyongyang, it was spelled differently, Pyongyang Games is white and gold, colors representing the Olympic Winter Games, white for snow and ice, and the torch relay for gold uh, would be for the flame. Um, and they, the per first person to carry it is, um, I guess they lit it, actress Katerina Lahour, dressed as a Greek high priestess, lit it in Greece, and then it arrived in Incheon, uh, South Korea, November 1st. So she lit it in Greece. It got to South Korea on November 1st. South Korean Prime Minister Lee Nak Yong passed it to South Korean figure skater Yoo Young in Incheon on November 1st. 
The ceremony begins the flames 100 day journey throughout the country. So they run it through the country, um, which is just amazing to me. And then Park Ji Sung carried the first torch um, in the 2018 Winter Olympics. He's the former captain of South Korea's national football team. So it's just really cool how they pass it from one person to another person for 100 days. Um, and it's a literal run of a torch relay um, from person to person. The torch's height that they had in Pyongyang is uh, 700 millimeters, which is 27 inches high. It looks much bigger. Um, and it represents the exact altitude that Pyongyang sits above sea level. Um, the middle, oh, we already talked about that. Pentagon shapes at the top and the bottom represent the five continents of the world. Torch relay is several months. Um, and they live, they take it out down to the Korean Peninsula, 17 cities and provinces across South Korea. February 9th, it reached the Olympic Stadium and it lit the flames. So that's a really cool thing about the torch, which I didn't know. Um, and then, oh, over here, so a metal count here. Um, triple axle, the only triple axle landed by a female American skater was something that was very exciting. Um, Jamie Anderson women got gold for a women's snowboard slope style. And I have to say, watching those, those women or anybody go down the half pipe and up into the air and flipping around and Oh my gosh, then they actually landed again and went up the other side and flipped around and then they landed again. It's just amazing to me to watch. So exciting. Jessica Diggins and Keegan Randall, um, women's cross country, got the gold in first, uh, first one in cross country. Um, that's the first ever medal for us in cross country. Red Gerard, women's slope, men's slope style, um, got a medal, gold. And, um, he had overslept before his event because he stayed up too late watching Netflix, had to borrow his roommate's jacket when he couldn't find his own. I love stories like this. Chloe Kim, woman's half pipe, um, was amazing and beautiful and uh, 17 years old. Michaela Schifrin um, and got gold. So we're kind of running out of time here, um, but we really appreciate you joining us. The Olympics are on again at 8 o'clock, um, and they will be on until the 25th. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Lisa will be back. Thanks for watching.